Good morning, folks. It's daylight savings in the United States. You're looking at Stellarium, sunset in the western sky from Columbus, Ohio. Just afterwards, around 8.30 or 9, the Pleiades and Jupiter begin to rise in the east. Jupiter is of note because it rivals the brightness of Venus right now, but also because locating that bright site is the easiest way to find Taurus, the bull constellation. For those who missed yesterday's news, Taurus is the location from which the Taurid meteor shower emanates. It's best for the southern hemisphere next few days, best for the north late next week. Top stories. Thousands of liters of light crude were found in the waters off the Finnish capital. Flooding is continuing in India. You remember a cyclone hit three days ago? It's still there. Imagine if Sandy blasted New England for four straight days. These folks need a break like yesterday. A mid-five-pointer struck the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Western Canadian aftershocks are continuing. A three-pointer shallow in Utah and a 5.4 in Peru. Yesterday, I discussed how this low-pressure system was going to freeze northern Europe. Well, here's a look a bit south at the expected rainfall. Western and Southern Australia are in for a bit of a cooldown as a protruding Arctic cold air mass will fight the summer trends for two days. Here's the past 12 hours rainfall for you guys. Significant precipitation in yesterday's watch zone. Also got some snow in New York. Not really what we want to see in the general area where people are still at risk without power. As those winds continue to sweep down from the north, they will meet the southern air for our watch zone this evening. We had two gamma bursts added late. Halloween burst from Leo and one on November 2nd came out of Sagittarius. The Earth footprint is clear, indicating an Earth-side connection, but one that does appear headed for the limb. You see half the individual magnetic connections on that footprint turning away from us now, and half towards the center or just left of center on the Earth-facing disk. Polar radiation storm danger is low with little chance of flaring near the footprint. The sunspots are pretty measly right now, in fact I showed the magnetogram first, otherwise you might not be able to spot these umbras. A lot of planetary positions of significance in November. Yesterday's news video shows how it all plays out. Didn't even touch on the end of November yet. Meanwhile, we await a solar wind stream from that dark coronal hole turning to the right. You see another small coronal hole up in the northern region just left of center. The thin dark lines are plasma filaments. Gotta watch them. Three broke away yesterday. Luckily, none headed for Earth. Eyes open. No fear. It's a bit before 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.